two, three, four, me, we, 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 cheap here on the underwork party, so. <laughs> We're the band, too. Lucky us. Lucky you, lucky me, lucky you. Hey, everybody. This is the Underworld Party. Very first interview. Zero, zero, 001 interview. The one and only... Larissa Call, welcome to the Underworld Party. Thank you so much. Oh, you're so welcome. <laughs> you're so welcome. Hmm. Hmm. Well. Well, well. Thank you for uh, joining me. Thank you for... Taking a sweet time to uh, deliver your sermon from the mountain today. I know, that's what's going to happen. You're going <laughs> to download the transmissions, you're going to upload the booty, and you're going to... Yeah. Uh, is there anything you'd like to say before we begin the, uh, the interview technically? Mm. I 
just want to welcome like all the different creatures, all the different kin and, and different beings that we can or can't see that are but that are part of this. I feel you and I love that you're here with us in the underworld party. Um this really feels like it, like this is it. Like we uh you know I feel like I had a lot of fantasies in this life about uh how to be inside of uh, this this timeline and this reality and certainly Underworld Party is like kind of the main thing uh, <laughs> that came up over and over again. Uh, yeah, so I feel like I've arrived. <laughs> like that rave in the Matrix? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> End of the world! Oh, yes! That's uh, it! You're in a big cave. Everybody is so sweaty because everybody's maybe... You just <laughs> almost died. You might almost die, like, tomorrow. And all your people are right here. <laughs> and somehow they have, like, crazy base. <laughs> yeah, of course. Somehow. <laughs> so good. Multicultural. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's... Uh... Sure, sure. That's the... That's the... That's the... the... The entirety of the movie is really just that it's one. It's just scene. for that. I mean, how, how else do you nourish all those choices you have to make and all that shit you have to do? You gotta, right. like, like. What's the point, Neo? Oh, yeah. This is the point. This is why you fight. This is why you come out of the Matrix. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. Yeah, sure. So you have real parties and not <laughs> fake ones. Um, yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, yeah. I'm excited to sort of get into it um, to talk about all the things. I got some notes, but, you know, we're going to go where the conversation takes us. Um, I'm interested in just starting out with, like, you know, it might be a bit of a wide topic, but you you can interpret it however you want, which is, um, what are you really excited about lately? Like, what's juicing you up lately? What's been going on in your world? Uh, Yeah, juicing me, juicing me up. Um... (laughs) You know, one thing that's been happening lately is, like, some part of my system uh, has just stopped freaking out. Like, you know, and this is the story, I think, of most of our lives. Like, all all our lives as humans is, is kind of, like, finding all the little ways to freak out less. Uh, and recently, there's been another layer of that that's, like, kind of, uh, it's turned into something else. Right, like that part of me that was like ah, tearing my hair out and just just so mad about something, and I couldn't even really put my finger on what. Um, huh. It's been a real pleasure to just to kind of like see that happening. Part of me's freaking out about something. <laughs> don't really know why. I just kind of like look at it every once in a while. I'm like, what you doing? <laughs> And that part of me is like, I don't know, I don't know, what is this real, like, okay, some people say I'm in a dream, some people are like, yeah, I don't know, there's, uh, it's a simulation, it's a, there's, you know, there's a whole, there's a whole massive evolution happening human-wide, and, like, what the fuck does any of that really mean, and my body was, like, really struggling with, some part of my body was like, "Mm." I think mainly the I think, like, in this moment, I'm realizing part of the juiciness is that, like, I just let, like, all that shit go. Like, somebody inside was like, yeah, all these stories about what we think is happening is actually not it at all. Mm -hmm. And all there is left to do is just, like, sniff the air and uh, (laughs) feel feel what you can feel. And turns out there's kind of an infinite possibility there. Mm Mm-hmm. So things got really simplified recently. Okay. Does this have to do with your the series that you just sort of filmed? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm like in part two of that series. You want to just give people a rundown on like what that's about? Yeah, we made some videos called Recovering from Addiction to Victimhood. Um, well, you made videos. I was just in number two. You were in one of them, yeah. So you, I've, okay, so I've made this collection of videos um, as a kind of starting point to just be more explicit about how I see people succumbing to the spell of victimhood, the very, very enticing, like immediately gratifying uh, way that we like to give away our power and we like to um, just kind of like suck, suck up at the, suck up the, the drug of um, 
kind of being a baby, really, <laughs> like kind of having a, like a baby moment. It's really sure. understandable. But anyway, so this is the, so I chat, I chat about that in a couple of videos and then I just filmed a final one where I just do the weird, the weird magic medicine that I do. <laughs> um, and it's pretty funny and yeah, yeah, yeah. that'll come out. Oh, you, you haven't released that one yet. So this is going to be like packaged. We'll like put links or something, I guess, in the notes or some. Somehow we'll figure that out. <laughs> Give that to you people. Um, yeah, I want to, you know, a little bit of backstory. Um, I don't know. Some people might not know this, but uh, Larissa and I have been, you know, together for about three years and sort of working together for about the same amount of time but the working together is not necessarily like, I want to clear some of that up I think the the confusion is very ripe in the trademark <laughs> industry uh, <laughs> nonsensorality that we're in so Larissa tell me a bit about just like your like your your history like you you know you know what you how you sort of carry your work where that comes from and you know let's bring it to the present moment but let's give people a little bit of the backstory yeah uh you know i was i was born in a in very in a very small town in wisconsin so some like real midwest rural roots i'm i was born into a mixed family i'm a mixed race person and the first place that I started to try to like follow some kind of guidance was through social justice work and community organizing. Mm -hmm. So I had a real like profound experience uh, when I first started to get a full framework um, from at the time, like, these folks were called radical feminists. I think, I don't know that I think that people have different ideas about what that is now, but my, in my opinion, it was, it's actually intersectional feminism, um, radical feminism being like anti-capitalist in particular, like very staunchly anti-capitalist. And that was my, that was my first cult. <laughs> um, and it was, yeah. <laughs> Around what, how old were you? How old were you? Let's about just, 19. Let's play some people. So, so about 19. So how many is that? Like 10, 12 years ago, 13 years ago, something like that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 13 years ago. First call experience, and uh, this was you were you were essentially a, a a scholar artist or something. Is that what was happening? So like you didn't just go into. It's not like you were just like going for this. You were you were making art and then discovered this, right? Well, I had been organizing in high school. Okay, and it was very. You know, it was high school organizing. I didn't have a lot of guidance. I'm not saying I did anything that great <laughs> or really new. You know, I definitely didn't have, uh, again, this kind of co this coherent map, semi semi coherent map that started to like, uh, that I started to be able to lean on. That came uh, when I I went to school at UNC Chapel Hill, which is in North Carolina, and there's. You know, as this happens in institutions, there was this one like pretty famous teacher who just had like this is what she did. She like delivered this particular uh, transmission about social justice and sociology, and um, yeah, it was in my you know everything lit up inside when I when I went to this place. It was totally one of the first doors I walked through that like felt like I was starting to become a little more sane. Um, that was very helpful for a while. Mm -hmm. And so this was, this was like the radical feminist mentor person, you think? Or no? Yeah, I don't think she really liked me that much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, probably not. <laughs> um, she always like, I feel like she always acted a little bit weird with me. Um, she sure. seemed to like my friends a lot more, but, but she, I mean, regardless of what she felt about me, I definitely was in her bubble and my friends and I were really in her bubble and, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it was a whole thing. Um, and then there was a lot of like different kinds of organizing that was happening at the time as, you know, with other students and other, um, other people on campus. And, mm. but you know, the thing it, along with that, um, I also started to, yeah, I basically spent over four years training pretty intensively in, um, theater of the oppressed. Mm. Uh -huh. So that was one of my, my main, um, 
that really grounded me. It yeah. really, really grounded me inside of that, that yeah. place. Yeah. And, okay, so theater, the oppressed, college, and then like take us, take us from this place. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna it's I'll I'm gonna speed it up because there's so <laughs> yeah, many speed. places. Like, okay. <laughs> so basically, like I, I so in my young years, in my early early like activisty, oh my heart's on fire. <laughs> like oh I have all the answers. Like I understand what's happening. I'm not crazy. Like this shit is fucked up. Had all that vinegar. Um, <laughs> but I also had you know I, I yes there was a lot of performance art. There was a lot of theater in that and. Um, um, yeah, and then I just kind of, conti- tr- and then in the world, you know, I did graduate and all that, and uh, that, that meant absolutely nothing. Um, you know, that degree didn't matter hardly much uh, at all, even though it brought me a ton of great skill and experience. The world didn't uh, <laughs> seem to value those experiences that much. But basically, I, I went to try to, like, do more organizing, right? So I... I popped in and out of different like nonprofits because that's the only like that's one of the ways that the world has created like oh you care about stuff like come into this field that was a you know total mess um and then I did and then I did what I considered to be like the probably the most in um full of integrity version of organizing which um was with Western service workers in California, in Oakland. And that blew my mind. The way they do stuff there, like, absolutely blew my mind. Um, And yet, I still kind of, like, felt this, like, huge piece missing. And so I just kept following that piece, right? Like, this is what you do. You try something out. You're like, okay, that's some of it, but something is still missing. Um... And so I started to shift. I started to recognize the the things that were missing um, was a was a was a like grounded spiritual frame. And I don't know that I would have been able to use those words then, mm-hmm. but it was like the heart of things, or the belly of things, or the like the kind of real life aspect of things kept getting like smooshed to the edges all the time in this organizing work mm-hmm. um, to different degrees in different places. But yeah, it was a huge thing. Um, and then on top of that, I just saw over and over again, like the relationships were a mess. People's mm-hmm. relationships um, inside of organizing communities or across communities were really struggling. And um, so I started on this path toward a, uh, healing right or counseling um uh but luckily when i went into my to get my degree in counseling i also started an apprenticeship in spirit work at the same time Mm -hmm. so um yeah i kind of got this like i was in this very weird (laughs) um experience in a very academic kind of like mainstream normal Place, and at the same time, um, having a, you know, a very, 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 <laughs> how, many, very how many cults is this now? <laughs> so many. many. You got to count. This so is like, many. I'm counting at least three, but. Oh, know. no, there's 10 in there. There's, oh, there's definitely 10 or more. Um, okay, okay, okay. Because yeah, yeah, everything yeah. turns sure. into the, everything turns into this without, like, without decent, uh, without some, some kind of decent way of perceiving it all just like kind of yeah, feels yeah, the sure. same way it's, become, yeah. it's like the gravity well of humanity is to become culty <laughs> yeah at this point mm. i think so we're really in that place yeah, yeah. um but yeah okay. so you went from organizing um we haven't talked much about the art though and so do you want to say a little bit about the art that's been through that whole experience <laughs> i mean to be honest i think most of my collaborators earlier on like didn't understand what I was trying to do and I had a really hard time translating like (laughs) what I saw I was like having these organizing experiences I was also just living my life and being a human and you know many um you know crazy things happening in the world and then I would come to make art 
What kind of art? Let's give people a little bit more. Mostly some kind. It's mostly performance art. Mostly performance art, mm-hmm. but visual art too, right? Yep, I've always been. I've been drawing and um, doing visual art my whole life. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But um, actually, both of those, you know, both of the both the visual art and the performance art, it's like, it was really there was something so difficult about communicating what I was feeling. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's actually a whole wormhole <laughs> we could like. Do you want to? Yeah, you want to say more about that. Yeah. Go into that. You know, there's like this image that comes up of like, I was like a dog with a bone a lot where I really, I was chewing, 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 chewing. I could feel the thing all the time. I could feel this, I could feel these voices. I could feel these presences. I had nobody at that time to like direct me toward, hey, a spirit is talking to you (laughs) or like these beings are with you. Nobody was, I was not at a place where anybody said that to me. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, so it was a really strange experience where I was so connected to something, so connected to something and listen, and really listening to something and then trying to communicate that either directly verbally through collaborators who are making work or even just through the work itself. It was like, You know, I think we had moments where we got there, but there was just so much stuff around creating the work and around communicating inside of the culture that it it was quite painful. Mm -hmm. And I would go large, I would go large spans of time just like not touching anything because it was just a frustrating process, I think. And very like mysterious and confusing. Mm -hmm. And is this still, this is still like, the lack of some kind of coherent map or is that part of like the the inability to communicate with others about like what we're trying to do with the art or something um i think the the, yeah a cultural the lack of a spiritual cultural map um that was actually rooted in like something real wasn't there and Mm -hmm. so it was like i was (laughs) i don't know the image that came in is like you're on a cruise ship and like all these kind of like zonked out dissociated tourists come but you do you're like trying to do this show because you're on the ocean and the ocean's talking (laughs) to you and uh you can feel it and you're actually like i can't do anything but try to communicate this Mm -hmm. um but but all the people all the tourists on the cruise ship are just like what (laughs) what's happening the contexts aren't talking to each other or something they can't like logo together yeah (laughs) i I feel like i kept trying to find like that's what i was maybe doing a lot of the time is like keep trying to find the linchpin oh yeah it's like something could come together for people Uh uh-huh it happened occasionally (laughs) sure sure (laughs) of course all right, so you went to Lewis and Clark, got your master's degree in counseling, yeah? Mm-hmm. That's in Portland, Oregon, so-called Portland, Oregon. And um, you were a part of this, you know, spirit worker community. Mm-hmm. And um, how, how many years ago did, like, what, let's, let's do a little context of time and space. Like, when did you graduate that, that college program? Um... Four years ago, maybe. So somewhere around there. Okay. And so you've been working as a professional counselor since that time. Yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah. Pretty. Yeah. Pretty much. I mean, you start to get, you start working with clients in the program. Right. Um, but and in the program, you were also working with like, um, kids and like, um, what was the, what was the other program that you did? So I did an internship with an organization called Allies in Change. Okay. And that is a, that's an organization that um, works most, mostly with men, although I think they, they actually work with women too. Um, they're definitely in that gender binary world. But basically, people who've been convicted of domestic violence crimes, mm-hmm. um, 
they go through a program with them. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. So this is like a group therapy model with domestic violence folks. Yep. Right. So you've got that experience. Okay. I just wanted to paint a picture for people because we're getting to the present moment and the present moment is really gnarly. And I don't think, I think it's useful to give people context for like what's the, what's going on right now. Um, Yeah. Um, and so you and I met about three years ago when I did uh, I did a free trauma talk to a group of uh, dance people. And, you know, in Portland, let's just say it's, it's a, it was a Buto community, which is a neo-Japanese art form that um, has been adopted by a lot of white folks in the world. And I've trained in Buto, too. So, you know, it's, it's a nice art form. Um, and uh, I was starting my sort of strange counseling business without a college degree, <laughs> yeah, because that's just the way I roll. And um, certain people were starting to ask me to give some talks, and uh, that's a group. A group of folks reached out, and I gave a free chat in a coffee shop, and uh, you showed up, or you were part of that group, um, because there was. Uh, some consent violations in that community that had never been cleared up. And I don't think they're cleared up to this day, right? So <laughs> so this is this is part of the thing, right? It's like people need answers. And then when you try to give them the answers, they don't actually can't actually implement the answers. So I was this person who was like, hey, I'm trying to help whoever's willing to do the work. And um, let's see who's actually down to discuss cultural trauma, possession, spirit work. And, you know, for me, Bhutto is really a possess a possessory art form that most people don't talk about. Um, mm-hmm. So there are these physical theater sort of genres or styles that are specifically about going into trance, but no one tells people what the fuck the responsibility of going to, into trance in a room full of decontextualized Westerners actually might do. And I come from a physical theater background, so I was really interested in trying to bring some kind of consciousness to the arts community. I don't really think I succeeded, but, um, you know, whatever. Maybe this is the larger project or something. Um, but anyway, you were part of that that group, and uh, we met, and then uh, I was sort of struck by your presence and also the fact that you seem to have the most actual skill and training of anyone in that uh, arena. And uh, yeah, and so we met and we started talking about uh, the work and uh, kind of discovered that our frame was actually quite similar, which is actually quite rare. And I just want to sort of pinpoint the rarity of people who understand about things like polyvagal system and attachment theory <laughs> But also understand about spirit possession and contacting entities and trance and what most people in the West call shamanic work, which isn't, it's really witchcraft, so let's not get it twisted. Um, But anyway, the combination of those, most people don't have those skill sets, and Larissa was already working in that, with that uh, cosmology. And so that's very rare. It's very rare. And so there was a kind of synchronistic ancestrally led meeting of us and um from that time we just i don't know what do you even want to call it <laughs> we just were like let's do this thing ah! <laughs> yeah, yeah i don't know it's i mean i'm thinking about the some of the first times we like really hung out and you know, it was like we were we were a little overly dramatic than I think we would be now, but uh, <laughs> it really was like two two vortexes of two planets like crashing into each other a little bit and like really loving it and also being like fuck, you know how how do I digest? Yeah, sure. <laughs> What's it's happening? A, like... It's a long-term <laughs> lifetime project, I think. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Just too. like for anyone. but, um, And so uh, this is around the time when I started um, working with Tada Hazumi. And um, 
also was working with Daniel Four as a student, and then that whole thing blew up. And this is around, this is a very um, big period of the, the time of the work. So the work is alive. Let's just not get it twisted. The work is alive and it's not mine. And it's not Larissa's. But the framework that we carry is pretty unique and it's pretty specific. And I called it for a while animist counseling. And I'm putting air quotes for those listening via audio. Um, and I do that because I've come to even understand that the word counseling is is very problematic in the West. But at the beginning, I was calling it animus counseling. Tata Hazumi was calling it cultural somatics. And um, Larissa was calling it something else, which let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah, I think I, uh, I think it's still even on my website because I haven't updated it. Um, uh, but I've called it liberal, uh, liberatory animist healing. Yeah, liberatory animus healing. So three words, or three terms with many words inside of them that kind of point to a kind of um, cosmological or cosmovision, cosmo cosmic map of humans relating to other beings. And of course, with that, you work with what, what the West calls trauma or PTSD. Um, and so the work is actually evolving again, and there will be a new terminology, but we don't know necessarily, we don't know what that is yet. But um, yeah, so that's sort of like, that's sort of like backstory. <laughs> is there anything you'd like to add to that backstory before we sort of jump into something else? I would say that uh, you know, I, I hopped around a lot of different places, a lot of different, um, organizations or collaborations or whatever. And now I can see the ways in which I was, I was really paying attention to, um, the relational dynamics between everybody. And that is, that continues to be one of the, the biggest, like, um, questions and explorations and research um, that I continue to do and uh, well because because what's also included in this backstory is like like incredible relationships incredible relationships that I got to experience and then also many of those relationships um, getting super weird getting super super weird and having to walk away mm. um mm -hmm. and i'm i'm really with that and i'm really with and i see how that's happening for a lot of people everywhere and now um i would say that i'm just getting more and more clear on like on what helps sustain people what helps sustain what we have to do right like we talked about in the beginning um like i'm here for the party and the party might be like taking a nap <laughs> it doesn't really matter but the but the but the feeling is the same this idea of like ha having access to the the most simple kind of enjoyment the most of most available most accessible simple kind of enjoyment it's difficult because we have so many distractions and um, you know, and in this culture, there's so much like thought saturation um, that gets in the way of that. But I'm here to bring the party. I'm here to bring the sensory party, <laughs> the pleasure party, the um, the death party, like whatever. Uh, all the shit that like stirs you like deep down here and all the way up and um, also makes us stronger, like actually makes it so that <laughs> everything else doesn't feel like such a burden. Um, like we don't, we don't know what we're going to have. Like we both dealt with different things. Like so many people in the world are dealing with, uh, really gnarly situations and we don't know what else is ahead of us. Yeah. But I, I can now say with a lot of confidence that, I have I have practices and ways of playing and ways of um, connecting to my own experience and my own pleasure that just has me 
just feeling like, okay, like whatever the fuck is coming, uh, I, I choose to, to enjoy and to, uh, fight for my own life and the lives of my loved ones. And, um, yeah. And so this is all kind of coalescing more and more based on all those experiences that we talked about. Mm -hmm. And, and so this is kind of a, I mean, I think it's a radical departure from what Western counseling talks about, right? Like, like Western counseling is not necessarily talking about the erotic. It's sometimes talking about art in terms of expressive art therapy, but it's not necessarily explicitly always sort of combining the erotic with spirituality, with animism with artistic expression and with this kind of like, I don't know, like you spoke to a kind of like flexible adaptability to whatever is happening, not necessarily a fixing, solving, curing or healing. Like maybe that is healing, but it's not necessarily like, you know, like the healing in the West is kind of this linear, I need to heal my past thing. And what you're talking about is not really about that. Do you want to get a little more specific? Uh, I think this is a juicy topic. Yeah. The kind of practice that we're talking about is where you get to this place and you touch, you touch something that starts to be very difficult to describe, but there are many, many words for it and many attempts at describing like what it is. But you touch it, you touch this place and it's maybe you feel it inside of you, maybe you see it like reflected back at you, but you touch this place and it just annihilates so much other um, crap. It annihilates so many uh, layers of like fretting and being like, oh, I want it this way or oh, this is bad or oh, I'm uncomfortable or blah, blah. Like it just wipes it and you can touch it and sometimes you touch it and it's and you know maybe you're you know maybe you're using substances and you have a full-blown like blah but sometimes you touch you can touch it all the time and maybe you touch it like eh, just a little bit in there you'll stick your little paw in there and wiggle it around and eat but even that you can feel it and it will help organize everything in your system um And yeah, I think, you know, what I saw in my program and with other counselors is that people, people are channeling that all the time, but they don't, they don't necessarily see it and they don't necessarily see where they abandon it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so you'll like, I mean, the counseling world is so funny because it's, it's super, super diverse in the sense that, I mean, there's just like endless things you can say that you do. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but you'll find, you can see practitioners where like they get in the zone mm -hmm. and they're, and they're touching that place. Um, sure. Cause it's a human place, right? It's a human place. It's there for everybody. Uh, but then they overcomplicate it usually. <laughs> well, I mean, what I hear you talking about are things like that aren't necessarily even what counseling is necessarily talking about. So we have this counseling, mostly thinking about the mind and thinking about thoughts and narratives mostly. Right, this kind of narrative therapy, this cognitive behavioral yeah, that's therapy, the dominant. and then of course you have this other therapy, which is somatic therapy, which gets a little bit closer. But then you have these indigenous practices, such like qigong, Nagong, kundalini practices, Tibetan dzogchen, all of these practices that are about going into trance. You know, so we have African ritual, drumming, dancing, singing, these ecstatic states, and for me, that's where you, I feel the most of the thing that is actually healing for people and for myself, which is touching this great expansive energy that has never been um, damaged. So trauma is all about, I was once whole and now I'm broken. And in the practices that I'm talking about, and I think you're talking about too, is you find the place that was never broken and actually can't be broken, except you can abandon it. And which is what we do when we you can you can pretend to abandon it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can have yeah. the experience. You can like have the experience that you're like, oh, it's not here, it's there, but you've sure. just forgotten. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. 
There is no escape. <laughs> there is no escape. Right? Yeah. Like, there's no escape. There's no escape. Right. That's that's good. Yeah, there's no escape. <clears throat> you know, it's... So I was speaking earlier about this part of me that has relaxed, right? Finding, you know, over time, it's like you have, in, you have all these, like, seemingly infinite layers of, to yourself that could relax more, and a recent one has relaxed, and... Part of part of that freak out is uh, does seem to just be about the like the sheer stimulation hmm. uh, of touching that expansive energy that you're talking about that that unbroken place. Mm-hmm. I actually have a lot of questions about that because. I wonder if there's there's something about the the ways that humans in the West or people who have been touched by colonization are relating to the mother, are relating to this force that uh, also, again, like you can't hide anything from them, right? So it's actually very terrifying, or it is at first. Mm-hmm. Um, to be in the gaze, like under the gaze of, of that one. (laughs) And so I I also just really understand everybody's like trying to wriggle away. (laughs) Everybody's trying to, right right there. Mm -hmm. There's like, Mm -hmm. they want to protect. Protect what? What do you think people are trying to protect? I think, unfortunately, I think this is what I mean by the cultural context that like, unfortunately we, we live in a very, very highly spectacled, um, especially in the United States, very highly spectacled arena where every th- it's very easy to get trained into wearing all kinds of different masks and pretending, right? Pretending that like things are okay, pretending that like things are not okay, like acting out all these really different roles all the time mm-hmm. and um, completely losing that that inner voice or that inner sense of like what's actually what is what's actually truly honest Mm -hmm. right now um and so then after many years of being trained in that way if you start to touch that gaze that like completely penetrating gaze that you can't hide anything from uh we freak out right right because it's it's about the totality Versus the versus the particularity that we choose our identities to be, right? And so you have to open up to the fact that like you're not just this one thing that you've curated so that other people can pay you. <laughs> and it also is the reality of you have to admit to yourself that you're essentially good and evil and all that that entails, which to the Western psyche seems like torture and also seems like it's going to everyone will abandon you or maybe even murder you or something like that Mm -hmm. right so we have this western inability to hold multiplicity complexity transcontextuality etc etc all the things that make a human more than one thing Mm -hmm. um you have to practice opening to that and, and yeah, there is a kind of sensory flooding that can happen at the beginning of that process because if you've been repressing yourself for, you know, 20, 30 years or more based on threats from your family and threats from the culture, that repression um, buildup is going to, I mean, you're just dealing with even the, the sensation of the buildup itself is going to be very painful. Yeah. Much less the actual relating to what's behind the buildup. <laughs> or I should say who is behind the buildup, not just what. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, in some ways, we it's like we create a, a labyrinth in between, like the part of us that remembers, the part of us that, and that, that, that has forgotten. There's mm-hmm. a, there's an, a, a very, there might be a, a, an in-between space that I think is very frightening. And uh, it's maybe 
feels easier to try to try to stay in the territory of like actually I'm not going to go in the labyrinth <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm going to stay out here I'm going to like watch my football <laughs> it's all good um yeah 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 and I'm, yeah. and unfortunately or I mean fortunately but <laughs> unfortunately for you know everybody and all of us who just want to like avoid things forever um it doesn't work that way it's going to draw you back in right and well also the avoidance is like an outsourcing a violence to other places, people, and countries, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that's the, that's another major thing where it's like it's. I'm not just talking about individual healing. <laughs> I'm talking about political too, because like, uh, uh, millions of people avoiding, is a country avoiding, which is outsourcing its violence to other places. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, uh, you know, um, yeah, that kind of thing is happening, right? And so we're. We're seeing that in the U.S. and also globally just, I mean, it's, it's unavoidable now. When I was growing up pre-internet in the 80s, people could still pretend to avoid it. And there's plenty of people now bypassing and avoiding and calling like reverse racism a thing and cancel culture a thing. But I think we have to recognize that the original cancel culture is white culture. It's Western culture. The original cancel culture is Western culture. Whatever's happening now is a response to that. It is not cancel culture. It's a response to white western cancel culture. So, let's just drop that nugget for y'all. <clears throat> okay, so we got some backstory, we got some present story. Let's maybe go a little future story. <laughs> okay. Um what are you dreaming into or what's dreaming you? Like, where are you going or where's the work taking you? What are you at least, you know, tasting, sniffing? You talk about sniffing the air a lot. Yeah, you mm. got to sniff your way through. <laughs> you got to sniff your way through. Um, sniff my flake, fake flowers. Mm. Oh, they smell so oh, terrible. They do smell terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Toxic. So, oh, toxic it's flowers. petroleum, petroleum flowers over here. <laughs> <laughs> so nasty. <laughs> Yeah, petroleum flowers. I bought them. I bought petroleum. the petroleum flowers. Yeah, it's real. All hail petroleum. <laughs> dinosaur <Petroleum>. blood. <laughs> dinosaur blood, yeah. Mm, yeah, put it all over me. Put Give me that dinosaur me. blood. Give it to me. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sniffing around. I'm sniffing around and I'm... Uh, more and more, I'm I'm just fucking done with uh, trying to like do everything we just talked about, right? Like pretend that I'm not an extremely strange organism that needs to, uh, you know, that has a a natural impulse and birthright to all kinds of different ways of expressing and clearing out my body and wanting to connect with other bodies um yeah more and more the world is looking like a just like a total funhouse uh mirror to me in that the absurdity you know i feel like i was i came in looking around being like this is absurd but it's just kind of ex exploded um uh you know seeing seeing and feeling the the ways that <laughs> just like all this all the shit we do that is like considered normal that's so insane um and so for my life that just means like like I'm really trying to shed uh similarly to you I'm trying to shed these counselor these like counselor or therapist spells that are that surround those words and um I just want to bring I want to bring the the little bit of the like useful wisdom that I have more directly to people Mm -hmm. And I, I also want to nurture and help those wisdoms grow in my own life because it's really clear that it's the only way. Um, you know, there's once once you get a little taste of it, it's like that's all. You know, uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. nothing else uh, really makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I've been working with you. I've been talking to you the last. Well, three years slash months slash weeks, <laughs> like whatever. There's all these different nested timelines. But um, um, 
we're definitely, I'm definitely trying to find a way to make it so that whatever is coming in, whatever is talking to me, whatever is gracing me, um, I want to, to make it so that the conditions allow whatever that is to be more free, mm. uh, to be more able to go where it needs to go, to grow in the ways that it needs to grow, to reach the people that it needs to reach, to change my life in the ways that will also make that more possible. Mm -hmm. um, right. More creative, right? More expansive. Yeah, there's no other, there's no other way for me to move forward without centering that that creative birthright mm -hmm. which i've talked about for as long as i can remember but now it's like something has turned in my life and in my system around that where i just all the ways that i was still kind of like oh but i'm too scared mm. to like really really go there or really hold it down now there's just kind of like nope you're gonna have to you're gonna have to deal with all of that um in order to just do the thing right without so many like meh, rah, 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 rah. you want to talk more like so so it sounds like you still are sort of grappling with you know we could call it intergenerational ancestral or cultural trauma around being able to say yes to who you are and what you want in the world and also the energy that's moving through you do you want to speak a little bit more about like how you in your body and your position are kind of being able to say yes because I, I can imagine there's millions of people in, in in a similar position who feel like they're not enough or that they're afraid or that they have some kind of trauma that's holding them back from saying yes yeah well I mean just on a very basic note it's like there are so many like I'm get I get message meta messages constantly constantly telling me that all the that everything I'm doing is not okay, right? All these all these ways of, uh, so, you know, speaking openly about taboo things, or even just moving in in my city in a way that is like too confident or too um, uh, relaxed, uh, right? I get messages over and over again that I actually like it's not. I need to be smaller. I need to be invisible. Like the world is pissed. Some, some, there are definitely beings, humans, but also energies and forces behind those humans that are really invested in me and people like me, uh, just being too, too scared to, uh, bleh, like really be exactly as we need to be. Right. Right. Like I went to the park this week and, uh, I was walking, I was walking in their beautiful like trees around me. I was watching this squirrel doing something and there's this there's this white dude that is up on a hill and follows me in like around the park and uh because I won't talk to him right and give him a smile and all those things he, he tells me he and his homies are gonna kill me uh -huh. right and that's actually pretty that's like not a surprising situation or right. experience right um and so my body has to deal with that like right. my body has to have a process around that um because right. we're dealing with possessed violent people <laughs> yeah and if you want to talk is, is particularly about pleasure um and maybe like the the primordial essence or forces behind what we're calling like sacred pleasure Right, not so much maybe immediate gratification type stuff, but like this, this kind of pleasure that, uh, again, when you when you're with it, it it helps, it makes it so that you're like yes, like it's worth it, like everything is worth it because I can have this, because I'm with this, and oh right, like this is actually the thing inside of everything, uh, and all that other shit is just like a a cartoon about how. It's not, but it's a lie, right? <laughs> so it's very, very threatening to anything that's invested in, in you being anxious and scared and uh, or angry or whatever, you know, in, in that stuck kind of way. Mm -hmm. So mm. shit, yeah, it's like, right, right. Ugh, there's a, there is a marathon martial quality to choosing 
to piss off those things every single day. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And sometimes I can't do it. Sometimes I like have to hide in my apartment and like fucking cry and just be like, I don't know. I don't know. And it's so hard. Right. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. I have to sure. do that still sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Cause I mean, there is a material, there's a still material violence happening that is not, you can't bypass it. I mean, I think if healing is pretending like you can somehow escape the reality of the culture and the reality of other people's actions is really right. not possible. I mean, even if you went and became a hermit in the mountains, you really couldn't escape it because they're going to come to the mountains eventually and the climate change and violence is everywhere. And, um, but I hear you sort of, you know, going, I want to be more free, but I, to be more free, I have to protect myself. But to really protect myself, I have to not hide <laughs> sometimes, but sometimes I have to hide. <laughs> sometimes I have to not hide, right? Yeah. <clears throat> I, I mean, there's so many learning edges in here where, you know, because something I'm trying to practice all the time is just... M- being in touch with or moving from that that very very deep um place of primordial presence or aliveness or love and for that to actually just be you know like even right now right talking about it there's like this certain colors are showing up and uh you know this central part starts to feel kind of like there's this eternal flame or something that's here and it brings such solidity not in like a this kind of solidity but a but a deep kind of like ah oh, feeling and then you know i go in the woods and i'm having that and i'm with the squirrel and i'm with the sunshine and i'm with the trees and there's this dude uh you know threatening to kill me and i like walk down the path a little ways and my body's having a, a, a an experience, right? All this energy's coming because adrenaline is starting to go. But I stay, I'm like, <sighs> I'm like, I, st- I stay, right? Because what can happen and what has happened in the past in situations like this is like my body will take on a flood of input, right? Like a f- uh, flood of energy, adrenaline, mm-hmm. all that stuff mm-hmm. pumping in my system. And for me, I, it, uh, I would shut down, right? I would be like, I am the all, like, uh, cosmic ignorer. <laughs> I see, I, I ignore you so hard that you, I don't know, whatever. It's like a really special talent that a lot of female body people develop around that. Um, sure. Yeah. But I would shut down, right? So I would, cl- I would be full of adrenaline, but I would, right, I would clamp down and it would be... Um, very very hard on my system because you're basically like holding all of the tension Mm -hmm. in this time all that energy was coming i was walking down the path i was like staying with that center and of course i'm like asking for help and and calling people in and (laughs) what i ended up doing this time was i actually it's like i went deeper into the dream some some special thing inside my mind was like you there are many possibilities (laughs) you you have more possibilities than you than you realize and you can feel that in a in a very specific way especially if you do dream work and so i i turned back toward him and gave him like the this like super thick hot stare ghoul shriek and uh mm. it was wonderful <laughs> you just screamed at him yeah it was a little i don't you know it wasn't really me it oh, was sure, like sure. your body <laughs> screamed at him my body made the sound um and it was a bit like maniacal like snake hiss mm-hmm. and i had definitely never made it to that kind of expression in a situation like that sure mm-hmm so this is kind of what I, I'm like, because we're, so I think what comes up for me in this conversation is like, so, okay, we have the, we have all these like relaxing meditative cont- contemplative practices that we do and, uh, oh yes, I'm, I'm safe in my apartment and I can like be in conversation with that 
that deep zone. But then you go out in the world, and how does that work? How does that play out? Yeah. Right? How do you maintain how do you maintain openness? How do you maintain deep connectedness while also being like, fuck you. Sure. But like a sacred, <laughs> like sure. a sacred fuck you. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Right? Like that shriek was a gift. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. I actually I mean, looked very clearly at him yeah. and at the situation and I felt into his energy. Yeah. And that's what I, that's what he got. Yeah, that's what he got. That was the call and response. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and I mean, we don't know what other people are going to, how other people are going to respond, but the point is not that. The point is to not base your response on their response to your response, right? It's like, because yeah. that's, then you get caught in that like freeze, freeze state. Because you're like, oh, what do I do in order to blah, blah, blah. Instead, you just were listening to like, what is the right thing for my system to do now? Yeah. And then you do it. And then if there's another thing that has to happen after that, you just have to follow that thread. But it's not like stopping all the threads before because there could be possible negative repercussions or something. And that's all from a thinky space, that's right? All that's thinking, all from yeah, a like, right. I'm pre-planning. I'm trying to sort this all out. So I'm predicting. I'm trying predicting, to predict. Predicting, yeah. yeah. And instead, it was it was very it was very spontaneous and um, right. and yet now that pathway is I did it and you now that yeah. pathway also has a neural reality inside of my body which also means that I can now build from that too right so right. it's interesting right we don't know what that will be but now there's potential um, nuance the system can develop in that pathway right mm -hmm. right. So instead of just screaming or shrieking, you might be able to do something else that is in that same pathway that is like more modulated or something else. We don't know yet, but we can't predict it. But right. And so this is the kind of plasticity that isn't just about going with the flow of culture. Because <laughs> that's part of the issue is like a lot of Western healing is actually about managing and being inside of a profoundly diseased culture and succeeding in that culture. So hmm. I don't want necessarily like, this is something that I talk about a lot is like, I don't want students or clients for whom their entire idea of healing is that they get to buy a house on stolen land. I'm, I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but I'm saying many people, that's their idea of healing in this profoundly broken culture because the culture tells you success is these things. Buying a house, blah, blah, blah. There's this kind of like ladder or hierarchy of salvation in this country. But what we're touching on or what you're touching on is this idea that we don't actually know what the fuck healing looks like because the culture is telling us all the wrong stories. So I want people to come who are like, I want healing, but I don't know what that's going to look like. And it might actually be not buying a house. And I think we have to really come to terms with that because this culture is basically telling us, shut up, put your nose down, make a lot of money, buy a house and be quiet and then die. You know, like that's what our culture is telling us to do. And it's actually profoundly damaging to all the other people in the world to, to live that way. Um, what happens if we actually follow a path of healing that isn't about just bowing to the culture around us. This is really important. Yeah, I am. Um... Yeah, I think that's everything. I think that when I say birthright to creative expression, that's also like spontaneous creative expression or fresh creative expression and there's a lot of humility inside of that because we're basically saying at least in my work and in the in my framing i i really f really understand at this point that as a human i have very especially as a westernized human i have very limited perception like even though I work with energy and I talk to spirits and all that stuff, my, my perception is super limited. Um, but even just as a human organism, I'm a very, very tiny part of a huge, a massively intricate and massively um, complex 
a set of living relationships and I'm not the mastermind, right? Like I, as a human, I have, I have the scope of what I can perceive and what I can offer and I can make myself available to the much bigger, much older, much wiser intelligences that are talking to us all the time. And I am not going to be able to hold all that. I might get glimpses of parts of it during certain moments, but I'm operating from a place of like, I'm a tiny, you know, I'm a tiny little like instrument that is just doing its best to listen to the, the much older and wiser instruments in the, in the dream, in the reality that are um, giving me directions. And people don't like that. (laughs) Uh, people don't like the idea that, you know, for example, if we were to come together and say, we don't have the big, we don't have the big picture, but we can, but there is a way of sensing, especially maybe together, that will help us like get to the next step. And then maybe 20 years where we look back and we're like, oh, shit. Mm-hmm. Oh, I see you now. But like I, all I could do at the time was just, just agree to listen um, to that bigger voice. And I think we're, I think that's, I mean, that's where the work is headed for me. And I think it'll be really interesting coaching people, nudging people into accepting that 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 might be a really key part of the future. Totally. Right, right, right. Like an unpredictable and yet like a wholeness, like an unbroken and expressive and an I don't know, like an I don't know what the fuck. And also like just because this culture decides that there is a right way and a wrong way. It doesn't mean that the culture itself that I'm inside of is correct because who fucking knows, you know, like really like that's, that's part of the the thing, at least for me is that like, I'm not actually anti-culture, but I'm also not, I'm not interested in being a follower of the cult of culture, right? (laughs) Like, (laughs) like, like Western culture is a cult. Then there's all these subcultural cults inside of Western culture like the cult of capitalism, the cult of patriarchy, the cult of racism. There's all of these, and there's more. There's the cult of New Age Westernism. There's the cult of whatever. You know, there's all these miniature cults, and they all tend to be about outsourcing violence, buying a house on stolen land, um, getting getting what's yours, what you deserve, your you know your rights, and whatever the fuck that means, and. Um, yeah, to me, it's like, I don't know. That's number one. But to be comfortable and I don't know and to relax into I don't know. And then inside that relaxation, there's actually a whole lot of energy that um, is extremely mysterious and like riding a wave or a current of energy that is not me, but it's like the breeze comes in. But if you don't open your window, you can't ever feel the breeze. And I think the reality is that that breeze is the larger beings that are talking to us but we're here building houses with windows that don't open (laughs) you know so when we're talking about the nervous system you have to be able to open the window or close the window or modulate the window that the breeze is trying to communicate you through right through those windows and some people's windows are blown open and they actually need to build them right but some people actually need to pry them open because they've been closed for so long And so this is the kind of metaphor that I think I'm using. It's like, yeah, build a shelter, build a house, you know, build a build something that you can use to sort of modulate the environment. But what we've done in the West is we've built these essentially concrete boxes with no windows. And so, you know, time to break a hole in the wall. Uh, Yeah, that kind of thing. Um, Well... This is, you know, this conversation could go on forever, but I'm curious, I'm curious as if there's anything that you brought that you'd like to talk about, or if there's, a, yeah, like, is there, are there yeah. things that you'd like to sort of bring to the table? Because I, I mean, I'm kind of, my questions are kind of answered, or at least, you know. You know, yeah, I, I want to pitch, I want to pitch really strongly for, like, embracing the awkward and embracing the strange. Oh, what's happening here? Um... So this is uh, this is my demonic puppet. <laughs> yeah. um, I have a I have a set of 
spirits or demons or ghosts or whatever that really haunted have haunted me for a long time they were very present in childhood and um there's a, so it's a very special relationship and i made this puppet as a way to give those beings some form and give that energy and that experience some form and it's interactive right there's like i can touch it and it, and and they move and they can have different voices and it's pretty it's a new relationship uh They've been around for maybe a few weeks. Mm -hmm. And, I, you know, I just would, I just want to say, like, when I've, when I've been inside of my own, um, like, embodied dreaming practice or ritual creative expression practice, if th things go so wonderfully and so there's a special, special satisfaction that your body starts to drink in when you can let go of, God, what do I even call this? Um, like you can let go of your, your like mm, movie, like movie star um, addiction. And when I say say that I mean there there are a lot of uh, uh, aesthetic or um, like artistic styles that have dominated a lot of spaces and it's it's something like this like Right? It's, it's like, like the Instagram selfies or something. Well, that's the most. Now there's yeah, right. That's like the that's that's the pouty lips way it's manifesting now. Everything is the right lighting. Kind of, everything is so. There's the there's the like physical part of it, but there's also a tone. There's like a sure. oh, this is so important. <laughs> this is the most important thing. Yeah. And it's gotta it's gotta be yeah yeah like ballet or it's nothing. Mm -hmm. Um, that is so, that is such bullshit. That is, oh my God. Um, but, but most of us have this working inside of us when we start to go into these creative spaces and we start to go, uh, move toward like whatever we're calling healing now, whatever we start, when we start to dis, uh, encounter ourselves more plainly or encounter other beings more plainly, we, this this like movie star Instagram gl glamour gloss fucks that up. Mm -hmm. It really fucks that up. And it's also, it's also can be very a bit dangerous relationally too, because that's also why it can be very easy to get lost in your own fantasy of what you think is happening. Like, Oh my God, my ancestors came and they, their hair was streaming and uh, they had this, there's such beautiful mountains and like, Actually, all of that can totally happen, but uh, also what happens is a lot of awkwardness and a lot of, like, miscommunication and needing to kind of, like, feel your way through something, and you an ancestor might be coming and, like, shitting on your floor. Yeah. And we, but we, if we're not, like, open to that, we're going to miss it. Mm -hmm. um, right. And that's not good for anybody. Because right. we don't even even know what that means. Like an ancestor shitting on our floor doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. <laughs> but if we have a cultural bias and we're already filtering that out as something we don't want, then we are like really missing like 99% of reality. Because yeah. we're filtering out everything that we think is bad all the time. And our system is going to not literally not be able to perceive it. And then when we do perceive it, we're going to call it a nightmare or something. And so we're already not able to be with it. We're already calling it a trauma before we even really know if it is or not. We actually don't know. Yeah, we don't know. And honestly, that yeah, this could this could be like f five million other <laughs> podcasts. But I just wanted to bring that in. Embrace the weird. Let yourself let yourself be surprised. Let the let it come to you. Because um, the delight and the surprise is that that's that's what it is like the experiencing through delight and surprise is is and, is and, better than anything yeah. else <laughs> and there's and, and you're saying something about awkwardness being intrinsically part of that delight and surprise 
Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, because it's because everything is intrinsically part of yeah. everything. So, yeah. and I'm just noticing the ways in which, in my own system and in many other people's systems, we want to, we we really tend to be invested in a cert, wanting to paint a certain kind of picture, a certain kind of grandiosity, or a certain kind of flavor, instead of actually just enjoying like aw- awkwardness and weirdness and strangeness uh is incredible like it's incredible that it exists all these like super goofy ways that we can be that's amazing Mm -hmm. so like not always rushing to what is polished or aesthetically suitable for whatever the fuck you're talking about (laughs) nope Uh, yeah 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 totally Cool. So more to come. Is there anything that we want to, you know, talk about? We, we you know, we're oh, just going to yeah. be more videos, but um, for this, for this in- interview slash podcast, whatever. Um, yeah. Is there anything more to seed? Do you want to talk about, do you want to touch on the announcement? Yeah, we could do that. Let's do that. Okay. So this is a follow up on, <laughs> on feeling into the future. Uh, Darren and I have a lot of things in the works, but one, one way that w- we want to create, create the conditions for whatever's coming through us to be more free and to, to grow exactly the way that it needs to and get the food it needs, um, is to, uh, announce <laughs> that we are going to, um, we're working on a an online foundational course that we want to make accessible to people through either free or by donation and we are going to ask for funding for the 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 gateway of that work opening so mm-hmm. that's like the first major project that we're looking at but we are but it's a whole thing yeah it's a whole body that is wanting to be bigger mm-hmm. um and we're going to make we're going to make an actual video about that to to release, mm-hmm. but we wanted to mention it here. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's real that like many people want the basics and unfortunately or whatever. I mean, maybe it's not unfortunately. It's like it's actually impossible to get people the basics vir- like not just one on one, but one on one plus virtually. It's like the time and energy is actually impossible. And um there's not enough people trained in this kind of work to be able to do that on a cultural mass level that is useful yet. And so one of the ideas is just, um, you know, I've taken a lot of courses. These courses range for anywhere from one to $3,000. And there are foundational courses in attachment, healing, trauma, et cetera, et cetera. And, um, you know, largely those are white people making those programs. And there's certification programs. And there's a lot of garbage. There's a lot of garbage um, involved in that Um, and so what I want to do is actually basically shut everyone up (laughs) I want to shut everyone up because if there is if there is a foundations course that is should be three thousand dollars but we basically give it away by donation then no one can ever say that the work isn't out there ever again they can never say that there's cl- anything classist or uh, ableist about the work. That it can just constantly live. And um, from that foundations, then eventually people might actually be able to gather and actually train in a way that's uh, not about certification, but about practitionership. So this is a longer term project, right? But it really, it, there really isn't anything like this that's actually available right now that, that allows people of queer people, neurodivergent people, mixed race people, BIPOC people, white people, to actually train in something that holds all of that, there isn't anything like that. If you look around, you'll see what I'm talking about. And so, yeah, in order to make this project happen, we're going to need a lot of of support from the actual community. And that's not the only project we've got in the works, but that is the that is a project that you can sort of like hang your hat on and say, oh, right, this is the thing that this is a thing, you know, that's going to happen. And then, of course, there's other other 
constellations around that that we're working on too. And yeah, we are going to make a uh, more formal announcement that's just about the projects and the kind of ecosystem of the work. And that's going to come out, you know, probably in the next month or so. Um, yeah, it's, it's both daunting and exciting, but also necessary. Um, it feels like a responsibility and a generosity to be able to do that. And to be completely honest, Larissa is the only person I've met that I trust with that level of responsibility. That's just the way it is. Um, so yeah, um, stay tuned. <laughs> stay tuned. Th thank you so much. Is there anything that you want to do, Larissa? Um, yeah, what do you want to do? Do you want to close? You, you Is there still more that you want to say? Mm, I feel I feel good on done on, done with the verbal realm, <laughs> uh, but could we do a little more sound making? Make some sound to finish it off. Yeah. Okay. Nice song in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Song in, song out. There we go. Yeah. Hey yo 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 ba yi ba yi ba yo. Everybody, what's the email? I mean, not what's the email. What's the what's the website? LarissaCall.com. L A R I S S A K A U L. dot com. All right, I'll put it more up in the show notes. Thanks everyone for watching or listening. Talk to you soon. Bye bye. <laughs>